Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to some more astrology with Sophia. Today, yes, it's going to be about um, astrology. So, um, I wanted to go over some of the aspects that are going to be happening in the month of October and November and how it's going to overlay the United States birth chart. So let's go ahead and go over some of these right here. Um, so the solar eclipse in Libra on October 2nd is going to be an aspect to the U.S. Saturn. So 10 degrees Libra in the sol solar eclipse aspecting the natal Saturn in the USA chart at 14 degrees Libra. And our Saturn is going to is in our 10th house. So that's the house of government, career, um, authority, reputation, all that kind of stuff. And what I think that this could bring about, I think that it's going to obviously lead to power dynamics changing, um, but it's going to be themes of realignment. I think we're already starting to see those realignment themes in government more and more each day I start to notice how how obvious it is between the corruption versus you know the ones that are trying to get out of corruption and stuff and I don't know if you guys feel the same and if you've noticed that too but it has a lot to do with not just this happening with this solar eclipse in Libra, but it's mainly to do with the United States Pluto return, of course, but this brings about even more because with the eclipse happening, it's like, it's blocking out. If you think about it, it's blocking out the, the sun solar, right? So it's going to be this, um, this almost bringing to, it's darkening. It's like a darkening, but it's also bringing to light. So we have the solar eclipse in Libra that's going to bring about the legal cases that are happening within the US, um, foreign relations and all the crap going on with that. Alliances that we have will come under, scru under scrutiny. We're gonna have to kind of go over like renegotiations with some of our alliances. And um, with the lunar eclipse that's going to happen in Aries on the 17th of October, it's going to be a full moon lunar eclipse. So that signifying um, a lot of endings coming about. But with it being an eclipse, though, because eclipses, you know, when it comes to eclipses, that energy do not fuck around. Let me tell you. Eclipse energy, do not fuck around. Yeah, it's, um, if anything, it's intensifying. If not seen in, you know, uh, in front publicly, it's definitely, um, going to spew out <laughs> into the public, whether it likes it or not intensified eclipse and Pluto return stuff that's just yeah major reform societal transformation which we've been seeing the progression of that over the past eight years basically of that uh, realignment but um so now we go to, well, oh, let me just finish this. So with Libra, it being in Libra, the solar eclipse, this is going to have themes related to justice, diplomacy, partnerships. It's going to bring significant legal cases to the forefront, foreign relations changes. So like our agreements with our alliances between Israel um, with Saudi Arabia, which is also... Um, a key neutralizing force um, and they've been kind of staying neutral the whole time um, but that's like we need like their aid and their help in this matter to help bring about p 
peace, right? Because if anything, like I feel like we are far more involved. We're not able to stay neutral, which has been such a disgrace. Um, the fact that we can't seem to even stay or know how to stay neutral, but um, that's just my personal opinion. Alliances coming under scrutiny. So yes, um, you know, it's like you are who you hang out with, that type of uh, concept, if you've ever heard of that, which I'm sure you have. It's very old saying, you are who you hang out with. So just be careful who you decide to hang out with. Or if you don't necessarily hang out with them, just learn how to play it neutral. You know, you don't have to get involved in everything. But moving on to the lunar eclipse that's going to be in Aries on October 17th. That's going to be closely aspecting the U.S. Chiron. So the Chiron place, placement is the wounded healer. And our Chiron is in 20 degrees of Aries. With the full moon lunar eclipse being there, that's going to bring up the themes of wounding and healing. How do we heal those wounds? Because it's going to be poked and prodded. It has been poked and prodded for the last eight years actually and um, since the Chiron is in the sign of Aries it represents wounding in individualism aggression leadership all Aries themes so um, but it's basically the house of self it's it's the identity since Aries is representing the first house that's of your identity and we've been suffering greatly from that. There's been a lot of wounding in that, sparking a lot of confusion and, um, yeah, just all that stuff. But continuing, um, it'll speak of the Chiron that's going to be aspected by the full moon, big time energy. It's going to bring up the nation's vulnerabilities surrounding, like I said, identity, but also military action because Aries, the god of war, that's military, right? Uh, while Pluto's involvement suggests potential power struggles like our Pluto return. So that's been involved ever since 2022, adding to the power struggles and the conflicts. Aries ruling military action, self-assertion, um, triggers the national conversations about the military, independence, the foreign conflicts, especially given um, the Pluto square as well that's going to happen. And let me talk about that. So, uh, like I said before, Pluto return has been happening ever since 2022 for the United States. And... Um, it involves challenges with power structures, control, and the economic systems. And since Pluto is still within range of the U.S. natal Pluto degree, which the exact degrees is 27 degrees Capricorn, that means October, November is where the 29th anoretic degree transiting Capricorn is really hitting us hard right now. Then we have the Pluto square, the lunar eclipse, the full moon lunar eclipse in Aries in October, signaling a period of very intense transformational crisis, like economic, economic shifts, um, political power struggles. I've been bringing this up already. Revelations of hidden corruption that come up to the surface. Now, we've been seeing that already happening little by little, you know, where involves the Epstein list. Um, now Diddy. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of that stuff coming out. Um, and then a ton more that might not be mentioned on the mainstream, of course. Um, let's see. Yeah. Pluto's energy relates to deep societal changes, including the upheaval in institutions and governments. So, Definitely a time of the nation's soul searching and rebirth. Then we're going to have the Jupiter retrograde. That's in Taurus, trining Pluto and Capricorn exactly on October 13th, which is on a Sunday. Um, this will be significant for the U.S. economy. 
Jupiter and Taurus emphasizes themes of the second house, which is the house that Taurus rules, of resources, uh, stability, security. So that gonna, that's going to make a harmonious aspect to Pluto in Capricorn, bringing more opportunities for um, restructuring and uh, economic reform. So the thing about it is that it's good, yes, but in order to reform something, it has to be dismantled first. You have to change and completely get rid of that old system. So that will still be a difficult process that takes time, right? But with this, it kind of ignites the starting process of that happening, basically, with this aspect. Not that it's going to be done right during that time. It just it uh, shows the signs of the slow progress forward and when it actually starts to ignite. Um, but yeah, it suggests financial growth through deep transformation, like I said, might be involved with international trade, economic alliances. So because if you think about it right now, the U.S., no matter who gets in office, it's going to be a crisis president. We're already collapsed, you know, and it's not going, we can't dig ourselves out of what has already come to pass. So the next president will be a crisis president. And so they're going to have to navigate how to get us out of this crisis so that we're not falling further and further down even more. You know, we have to try and climb up little by little and you can't just do that all on your own. You need to have help from your friends. Just like when you're down in the dumps, you know, go through life and it's like, man, you're in a, you know, you're in like your, what is it? Dark night of the soul phase in your life. And you need support. You know, you, you rely on support from family members or friends to help you through that process. So, um, of course, I mean, it's not impossible to do it all on your own, but those cases are not very common. <laughs> so especially for a country, I mean, there's a lot of shit involved. Then we have Mars, Mercury, and Sun in Scorpio. When the Sun moves into Scorpio, it's like Scorpio season starts October 22nd. But then Mars is going to move into Scorpio on October 3rd, and Mercury will move into Scorpio on October 11th. Um, but just having all three of those in the sign of Scorpio, according to um, one of the U.S. Uh, natal charts, having a Scorpio ascendant, will highlight themes of power control, um, obviously. Just like I said, it's kind of repeating themes, repeating themes. Um, it'll intensify public discourse around government secrets. The people are going to get fed up with all these things being kept from us, the lack of transparency. It's all going to come to a head, you know, and um, there's going to be uh, discourse around national security, crisis related to hidden and suppressed issues. Um, because there's a lot of those things right now. There is not a lot of transparency at all whatsoever with the people and the government. So with Mars and Scorpio, that's going to bring the assertive aggressive actions, uh, particularly in foreign policy, defense, or national security matters. When Scorpio is involved, it usually brings about like more of the investigative, like bringing things to light. Um, it could also spark uh, more covert operations happening though as well with mars going to the sign of scorpio and in the first house so like agent provocateur type stuff and or even just covert operations coming to light scandals being released and stuff more whistleblowers so mercury and scorpio will encourage those deeper investigations to take action bringing more of the hidden stuff out uh, to the people and then, of course, when sun, the sun enters into Scorpio on October 22nd, that's going to put a spotlight on the national crisis that's happening in the power struggles on the global stage. And it's going to manifest as a greater public focus on the U.S. government's internal dynamics. And rightfully so, because of the, there not being any transparency at all whatsoever. So, And the international relations, like what's where's the money going to why are we funding all these wars why why are we involving ourselves with all these proxy wars there's no need for that so that's what it's really going to involve and then when uh uranus 
uh, will be opposing the U.S. natal Mars in the seventh house of partnerships. Um, basically, it's Uranus is going to be in the sign of Taurus. It has been in the sign of Taurus. Um, it was opposing the U.S. natal Mars at 21 degrees Gemini uh, around 2021 to 2022. Now it's going back to the same uh, aspect of opposition. And it's uh, basically Gemini, Mars and Gemini, 21 degrees, ruling military and foreign relations. So with Uranus there, that is sudden, sudden, unpredictable stuff that could come about and um, disruption. So, and it could involve the nation's alliances, treaties, foreign policies, because Uranus brings unexpected events, right? I mean, it's Uranus, so, and it's rebellious, but it also is innovative. You know, it's, it is necessary to have these changes that happen to progress. So yeah, that'll happen potentially leading to shifts in military and it'll definitely kind of, uh, turn the whole diplomatic strategy upside down in a way, but you know, it happens. <laughs> Given Mars placement in the seventh house of partners and open enemies, so keep that in mind as well. This is happening in the United States seventh house, which represents relationships, connections, and your open enemies. So yeah, definitely some tensions that will be happening, sudden shifts and alliances, conflicts with their countries. Gotta be careful around that time for sure, especially um, since we have no control over the border. There's no structure there, and we don't know like exactly all the people coming in. You know, aside from just families in need and and you know uh, people seeking refuge, it's not just that though. Like you have to think of there's a ton of other groups there that would absolutely take advantage of that opportunity to get in and cause harm as well and not only that but they uh they essentially um it's dangerous for those that are trying to come over for a better better life because if it's not structured and stuff it makes it so easy for the bad people to um control the the ones who are just trying to find a better life and they're constantly living in fear 24 7 but anyway um next we'll have venus venus and virgo will conjunct the u.s natal neptune which is at 22 degrees virgo and that's going to be on october 28th also opposing mars and gemini so that's going to create a dynamic that highlights confusion idealism and conflicts around diplomatic relationships trade and military matters so again similar themes coming up that are going to be put front and center because it can no longer be uh you know hidden or or swept under the rug this will manifest as diplomatic efforts or peace negotiations in regards to venus neptune aspect anyway but that's one way it can manifest the other way it can also manifest is misunderstandings, illusions, or even deceptive tactics to foreign relations or internal politics. Then we have Neptune, and this has been ongoing. It's going to continue all throughout the rest of 2000, 2024, unless said 2004. Neptune opposing U.S. natal Neptune. So... The U.S. is experiencing its Neptune opposition, with transiting Neptune in Pisces opposing its natal Neptune in Virgo. So this transit brings the disillusionment and confusion around national ideals, healthcare, and foreign policy. Neptune can dissolve boundaries, making, like, and that's, prominent in the border like you can see it firsthand the symbolism there um that it shows blatantly like in in reality dissolving of borders there's no borders whatsoever um and if you think about it 
in the spiritual community, we talk so highly and how important it is to have personal boundaries, right? What do you always learn in self-help books? It's important to have your boundaries, strong boundaries to protect yourself, your spiritualness, your, your identity, your, your well-being. The same goes for every other concept in life. Like every other situation should follow that similar dynamic in a way because it just makes sense as far as the, the structure goes. So with the uh, Neptune and Pisces, the disillusionment, there's dissolving of boundaries, meaning, oh, just come in whenever you want. You can use me as much as you want. I'm a doormat. You can do whatever you want to me. Like Pisces is a martyr, right? That's what the uh, sign of Pisces represents is the martyr. Um, so I'm just ranting on. Um, but yeah, it dissolves boundaries, potentially leading to shifts in cultural and spiritual ideological identities, which is very true because if things are not integrated properly and at a steady pace, it creates a traumatic event, a traumatic response and experience because it's almost like as a child, when you're a child um, and you're learning something, like what is the best way to integrate into society, to integrate into something new? is to be introduced slowly. Like for example, um, you're introducing yourself to like uh, like another species or, or like something like that, you know? They don't know, they're fearful, they don't know what's going on, but they're going to maintain their stance, right? And you're just trying to get to know this foreign, um, I'm just using the example, okay? So you've got to slowly integrate, slowly, little by little, not just rushing forwards and whatever happens, happens. It's like putting a new chicken. It's like bringing in a new chicken from some other complete different source, putting them in a coop, uh, in, a, um, in a coop, a chicken coop with a whole bunch of other hens or whatever that have had their own groups for a while. I mean, that chicken that just comes in, you just sentence them to death, basically. So I'm just going to stop with the examples, but you get what I'm trying to say. That's what I mean about the shifts and trailing on. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, the ongoing transit though, this particular Neptune opposition to our natal Neptune has been very much a significant energetic influence to the internal divisions that have been happening over the years within the US. Um, because Neptune takes a long time to transit throughout signs, I need to look I need to look back to how long the transit period is, but soon Neptune is going to transit out of uh, Pisces. Um, but because it's been in this state for so long, you can see if you go back, um, you know, throughout the years, you can almost start seeing where the divisions start to get worse and worse and worse. Cause it wasn't always like that. Like 10 years ago, the sense of division, the sense of divide never felt like this before and it's like it has progressed to get worse and worse and worse over time and so you look to make connections to the possible energetic influences that could have triggered these responses this phase that we have gotten in uh, but yeah it also does that but speaks to ideological confusion as well which you can also see that has happened significantly to such an extreme over the years of the loss of identity, not knowing who you really are, confusing what is this and what is that, right and wrong are switching places, it's like there is no right and wrong, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you can definitely see that this has been playing out uh, for a while and the US, the US looks different on the global stage to compared to how it used to look. Before it was very strong leadership and um, you know, was very prominent and stuff. And now it's like, um, it's concerning to, to how we look on the global stage. It's like, there's not, the respect level is very low, right? Especially after the last four years. Um, yeah, but then a lot of, a lot of things have, you know, come to pass throughout the whole entire globe. So, Anyways, that is a little summary of the transits for uh, the United States 
in October and November 2024. I hope you guys liked it and let me know your thoughts on these transits here. Um, have you noticed any of these um, energetic influences definitely do align or kind of connect? You can make, can you make the connections to what I've been explaining in these aspects? So, all right, peace out.